I have been really enjoying Far Cry 5 so far. While it's not exactly new, it does make a lot of things quite different from Far Cry 4. The core gameplay is still the same Far Cry, but some of the really minor tweaks to the game does manage to make it feel more different to the last one. Some people have been complaining about things like microtransactions that allow you to get access to some of the best weapons in the game. But the game is already too easy in the first place, and it took me only like 3 hours before I could get a silent sniper rifle and a bow and arrow. I would have been more pissed if the microtransactions actually go towards the perk system, because that one is certainly going to affect gameplay. But while the microtransaction is lingering in there giving some dirty despicable offers, it's not to the point where the game is hard enough that you're gonna need one. I don't want to talk too much about my opinions on the game itself, because my last video has shown to me that it dragged it for a bit too long. I could have made an entirely separate video talking about the game itself, which I will probably do if I finished it. For now I'll be talking about Far Cry 5's reviews and how quite a lot of them demands this game to be more political because of the setting. So let's get to it. Here's a little bit of summary from GameIndustry.biz. The subtitle of that is describing how Ubisoft's latest open world shooter prays for its familiar but fun gameplay, but hints at political commentary leaves critics wanting. In a sense, the critics really want the game to be a bit more political, but in truth the game is really not. The cultists do not subscribe to a particular ideology other than Joseph Seed. There are similarities to that of Christianity, but beyond that, it's Joseph Seed bringing in his blessings to everyone. The first paragraph of the article is the writer saying, No, Far Cry 5 doesn't make any political statement on the current state of America, and nor does it try to. And to this I say, good, absolutely fantastic. Excellent! We don't need any sorts of commentaries on current political climates in our games, especially when it's presented in such a one-sided manner. It's just a simple story of religious nutters taking over a certain region in America and we had to take it over back from them. That's it. If you want to talk about politics, well, you already have an outlet for that. So go talk about politics there. And this brings me to my first point of the discussion. Why are the games titled Far Cry? To me, the title Far Cry comes from the fact that you are a helpless entity stuck far beyond civilization alongside others who are crying for help to have someone from the outside to save them. Far Cry 1 puts you in a tropical island full of mutants. Far Cry 2 is in the Central Africa. Far Cry 3 in a tropical island somewhere around Southeast Asia. Far Cry 4 in the Himalayas. And finally, Far Cry 5 in Hope County, Montana. You are stuck in the setting of all of these games far beyond civilization. The crying part is you and others' desperation to either get out or survive. So the game fits very well within the context of the series' title. It is Far Cry Another One. Whether it's good or bad is entirely up to you. But regardless of that, we can at the very least agree that it is another installment of the game, and Ubisoft has put effort in making this series to have a sense of uniqueness among other first-person shooters out there. Now let's ask another question. Why should this game be political? It takes place in America, sure. It has enemies of religious nutter, sure. It's released in 2018 in Trump's America, sure. Should it make any sorts of political commentary on current events in America? If it should, then... Why? By my experience, a lot of these journalists are asking for video games to have more meaningful political messages for two reasons. One, to establish video games as worthy of art as any other entertainment medium, and two, to spread a certain ideology. Both of these reasons have nothing to do with making the game to be fun or entertaining. It has all to do with the critics' desire of being accepted. It's a weird desire of meeting some sort of a validation, whether it be for video games to be accepted as art so that it can appear mature and therefore critics can feel zero guilt in enjoying it. It, or whether video games can have political messages that merely confirms one's political beliefs rather than challenging it. Or maybe one that doesn't take any stance at all. Apparently the game was originally meant to be a commentary on real life religious extremists and other issues in President Trump's America. But Ubisoft distanced themselves from this notion and it appears so in the final product. I can totally confirm this, more so in the final product rather than Ubisoft's intent. The game doesn't have to be a commentary on anything, it can just produce us a completely standalone affair. In a review by Eurogamer, the reviewer describes the story as utterly at odds with itself in that it tries to make some sort of a commentary on evangelical ecstasy, gun advocacy, and nihilism in America's heartlands. I really do not get that vibe. I think the game just tries to present the story as what it is rather than trying to make some sort of a commentary on anything. The religious extremists, or the peggies as they call them, are pretty self-contained on their beliefs. It's not tied up to any beliefs. It's not referencing any sorts of beliefs. It's very much standalone. It does channel some elements of Christianity but it manages to distance itself from being completely and obviously Christianity. I've never even heard any of the Peggy's utter the word Jesus. The reviewer points out that the creative director Dan Hay wants to analyze how cults rise and fall, drawing upon consultation with real-life cult programmers. But in practice, the Peggy's are just another army of expendable, dehumanized grunts, irredeemable from the get-go. 
This is absolutely true, but I don't know how else you're gonna portray them other than being a bunch of nutters that will kill you if you question the prophet. I guess adding some humanity or backstory in them would work, but you can't exactly do that to everyone. The reviewer then suggested that there's little sustained investigation of wider social factors, like the overlap between militant Christian extremism and white supremacy or sexism. The game ducks that question, especially by making the cult members with a mixture of races and genders. The reviewer called it a careful sanitizing of the subject matter. In other words, the villains are not racist or sexist and base his ideology entirely on the most common human emotions, like faith and desperation. Your race, gender, and ethnicity are completely irrelevant. If you are a helpless soul who is lost and troubled, Joseph Seed and his brothers and sisters will show you the way and bless you with his guidance. And this shows within the gameplay because you will encounter both female and non-white Peggy's crawling around. Even the resistance is incredibly diverse as well. So the game as a whole is pretty diverse and quite surprisingly meritocratic. So people's merits and actions are a priority here rather than their race or gender. It's quite interesting when a game that gives about as much as diversity as Far Cry 5, in both the good guys and the bad guys, a diversity that works within the context of the game's universe that still results in critics feeling unhappy about it. Just goes to show you that there is absolutely no use in pleasing these critics. If you try to make everyone diverse, they would call it a careful sanitizing on the subject matter, rather than for just one saying thank you. I for one is capable of saying thank you to Ubisoft for giving a Far Cry game that I can enjoy and I spent quite a lot of my time at it. If only you can show just an ounce of gratitude. Back to GameIndustry.biz article, a reviewer from The Guardian criticized the game for having one of the missions referencing a current event being played for laughs rather than as a political commentary. That's pretty much the treatment of every mission that are direct or indirect references to real world stuff. They played a lot of them for the laughs, so this is just a typical affair. In fact, the game is playing a lot of the stuff for laughs. This is a very bright and colorful game. Yes, there are scenes of torture, murder, and brutal realistic stories from the survivors, but it is done to establish that we're living in a semi-realistic universe. It didn't play itself too seriously to the point of greediness, but it also didn't play a lot of things for a laugh to the point of parody. In my opinion, it hits on the right balance, especially when compared to, say, The Division, a gritty realistic game that somehow has kooky characters and some really out of place humor. Far Cry 5's tone is not perfect, but it's not dark enough for me to at least consider it to be out of tone. The Guardian reviewers said that while Far Cry 5 comes close to trying to say something, it never actually does. And to be honest, I never get this impression. It just gives us a fun shooter with a villain that is religious and wants to kill the unbelievers. It's a very basic and formulaic concept that in a lot of ways Ubisoft plays incredibly safe, but that doesn't mean that it can't be fun, and I personally still have tons of fun with this game. The reviewer then describes certain gory missions that describe cannibalism and torture in detail, but then at the same time you do incredibly ridiculous things like tearing down a highway. I've seen a couple of story missions that fall under this category and all of them portray gore, cannibalism, and torture in a manner so over the top you can't even begin to take it seriously. It's kind of like how Quentin Tarantino portrays gore in every movie he's ever made. Just because the idea of a story is grim doesn't necessarily mean that it is. You can make the fiction about murder and still make it funny even if the topic is grim and depressing. Next review is by VG247, basically stating that the game does have a message to say, but the message is pretty basic and something that we are already know. The world has gone mad, people are desperate, and when they do, they can join Joseph Seed to find guidance or die in a ditch. Not exactly revolutionary in terms of messages go, but it's quite descriptive if you hold the title of the game into play. Ever since then, the reviewers talked about the gameplay. I want to focus on why some of the reviewers are interested in making Far Cry 5 to make some form of a political statement. In fact, the way GameIndustry.biz structured this article is by talking about the politics first. The gameplay, the added functionalities, features, and the progression systems are talked last. Does that mean that game journalists these days have their priorities shifted? Are they really focusing more on what the game could have done with the story and political themes rather than whether or not the game is fun? If yes, then why do they have to do that? Shouldn't the game itself be their first priority? That's the question right now that I think deserves some answers. So let's ask one of the news outlets that complain about this. There are many news outlets that complain about this matter like Polygon, Waypoint, or AV Games, but I want to talk about the one by Forbes because this one has the best arguments that can invite a more productive discussion rather than just me mocking Polygon or Waypoint point and telling them to go suck a dick or something. Far Cry 5 is apolitical to the point of absurdity. Please elaborate further on this, Forbes writer. What amount of absurdity has Far Cry 5 accomplished for being apolitical? 
but while I'm not going to dock at loads of review score points for not having social commentary or really any inclusion in politics at all, I do find it kind of hilarious and bizarre just how much Far Cry 5 steers away from taking a position on, well, anything. It's true that Far Cry 5 was being conceived and built before the frenzied political climate in the US escalated to where it is now, but in practice, it's more than a little strange to see a game set in rural America where players from a resistance to fight a militant Christian cult and it just has nothing to say. Nothing at all. One way or the other. Please do elaborate on why it is strange, writer. I still don't understand that particular viewpoint, but I will let you to bring in your explanations. First political topic is on race and gender. You might think that a religious cult in rural Montana might be forced to address issues of race and gender, but simply put, neither exists in the world of Far Cry. Women and men fight alongside one another on both sides in the conflict. Race is literally not mentioned once, despite Eden's gate and the Seed family giving off some extremely white supremacist vibes in their conceptualization and their iconography. They truly are colorblind. Both sides have white, blacks, and Asian fighters. You, the leader character, can be any race you want, and it has zero effect on the story whatsoever. Eden's Gate may want to kill you, but it's definitely not, because you're not white. Truly, a forward-thinking, murderous cult. Now this is an interesting point, because I really want to ask many of these critics about this. You have since complained about video games lacking diversity. You have been on record saying that video games need to be more progressive so that we can indulge in our utopian fantasies. Well, here's a video game where both the good guys and the bad guys are incredibly diverse, and in your words, a forward-thinking murderous cult. Here's a game that you want. Here's a game that becomes the result of your complaints, and you don't like it because it wasn't discriminating people based on race and gender? I still don't get how you find this weird. If you explain to me why you find this weird and why this deserves to be complained about, then I can probably understand. But after reading this and all of the articles mentioned previously in other outlets, I still can't find a concrete answer. So let's continue with the topic of guns. Don't expect any commentary on guns or gun ownership in a game that is built entirely around them. Is it a good idea that a cult can militarize itself to the point of ridiculousness thanks to weapon availability in America? Who knows? We the resistance have guns too, so we just shoot better than the cult and are able to win the war. Why does everyone in this tiny town have access to military grade hardware? Who cares? Moving on! Conversely, on the other side of the political spectrum, you could make the argument that this is why we need so many guns, in case our land and lives are threatened by invaders, yet the game doesn't explicitly make that case either. Everyone just has lots of guns. The end. Now the writer has a good point in the sense that the game doesn't really explain how the Peggy's can get military grade weapons. And yes, the game doesn't have much to comment about guns in both sides of the political spectrum either. Next topic is the opioid epidemic. Jesus Christ, that is surprisingly hard to say. Nothing much to say other than the game doesn't give any commentaries beyond these guys are like zombies because of the drugs. I agree that it's insubstantial, but it's not too bothersome in my book. The next topic is the government. Here's at the point where the writer says, well, you don't have to have some sort of progressive statement, to which I ask, then why are you making an article feeling weirded out that there isn't one? If the game doesn't need to have a progressive statement, surely this one would be an issue that you can just put aside. But instead, you feel so passionate to write an entire article about it. I am sorry, but I don't buy this statement at all, when the action that you do goes completely against it. Basic writing 101 is show don't tell, and that applies to writing articles as well. If your intention is to give the game some sort of a progressive statement, at least be honest about it, and describe to me the reasons why you want the game to have those. And furthermore, isn't having a game where the heroes and villains do not care about one's identity already progressive in and it of itself? That is unless you consider meritocracy to be not progressive. And the final one is about religion. As I said, the game doesn't even mention Jesus. Like, once. Joseph Seed's cult is entirely standalone, that takes some inspiration and quotes from the Bible, but it's not to the point where it's obviously Christianity. Nothing much, but it's clear from the paragraph that the writer is clearly bothered that it didn't make any sort of statement. So my question is, once again, why are you bothered by this? And if you aren't, then why make an entire article being bothered by it? Here's the thing. You can say that this is just a video game and that games are allowed to steer clear of politics, but the end result for Far Cry 5 is that refusing to take any stance on any kind of real-world issue, despite drawing on a number of them for inspiration, just flat out makes the game's story worse. Even if it took positions I disagreed with, it would still be more engaging than what we see here. So your argument is if it takes a controversial position, even if it's the one that you disagreed with, then it would be at least engaging as a story? 
Now, that is an interesting argument, especially considering that Far Cry 5's story wasn't too interesting already, but I think there are better ways for the game to improve the story, like giving the protagonist some sort of a personality, or a character arc like the last game, or making the villains to be more interesting and have actual death, or deconstruct certain elements of the story rather than playing it completely straight. Anything else other than, hey, let's make a political statement on contemporary politics. The point is, it's a lousy excuse. The way you say that the game would be interesting even if you disagree with the politics is also suspicious, because I've had experiences with game journalists that play video games with politics they disagree with, and the complaint train is on the same if not worse calibers than the one we got to when the game doesn't take any stance at all. You said that the game doesn't need to have any sorts of progressive message, but you also said that it sucks that the game doesn't have it. But one thing that I have to give props to the writer is concluding the article with an interesting paragraph. There's a lot of talk about how too much political correctness can stifle creativity and freedom of expression, and while normally I find that sentiment eye-rolling, I see evidence for it here. Ubisoft wanted to make a game that seemed like it was going to push every hot-button issue in America, yet it ultimately chickened out and delivered something that is desperate not to offend anyone, and unfortunately the end result is a much less interesting game than we could have seen otherwise. I actually surprisingly agreed. It's evident that political correctness can stifle creativity and freedom of expression, and perhaps Far Cry 5 is doing that just to avoid offending any particular group. And in a sense, that could be the reason why the game's story wasn't that great. Perhaps Ubisoft doesn't want to offend the progressives. Perhaps they don't want to offend the right-wingers. Perhaps they don't want to offend the gamers who just want to play video games and not being fed by any sorts of references to current year politics. Would having references or allegories to contemporary politics make the game to be more interesting? Perhaps, but then again, the game's writing and story have many other problems to deal with, and no amount of contemporary politics would actually solve that. I think the writers of these articles should shift their priorities of talking about the game's story and politics into actually talking about the writing of the villains, the protagonists, the side characters, the story as a whole, etc. But the bizarre amount of attention given to the game's apolitical stance is pretty telling to the current state of game journalism today. Game journalists cannot perceive video games as a medium of creativity, fun, and entertainment. They see them as one big megaphone, another medium that they can use to somehow shove in their political issues. And you want to know what's the most ironic part out of this entire exchange? It wasn't political incorrectness that bothers our critics for today, it was for being completely and totally neutral. Just imagine that. We are capable of bothering our critics for creating art that doesn't take any sort of stance, the same way we are capable of bothering our critics for creating art that does. In a lot of ways, I think Far Cry 5's attempt in being apolitical or lack of attempt at being political is far more successful of being a great art than any game has ever could. It managed to cause bother among its critics, who demand the game to commit to a stance not for the sake of making the story interesting, but to appeal to their own selfish reasons. I still don't know why you asked this game to take a stance. Is it for your own validation? Is it because you want the game to accept you and your opinions? Far Cry 5 isn't exactly a masterpiece in terms of its story, but the ability that it has to offend and bother people for taking a completely neutral side is something that I have to commend. Ubisoft, you have done some truly awful mistakes in the past, but this isn't one of them. This is an achievement, and for that, I applaud you. I applaud you for doing nothing at all and yet still be able to bother these people. That is amazing. 10 points for you, Ubisoft.